Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives, so we're talking about the second derivative test and how we can use concavity to find critical points. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We are just going to start with an example before we go into the actual definition. So if you haven't already, my last video is all about how we can find concavity if you want to check it out. Otherwise, we're going to use the second derivative test to locate the local extrema of the function sine squared on the interval negative pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. So remember, in order to find local extrema, we need to use the first derivative test, which means we need to find f prime of x. So if we do that, we need to use chain rule, right? We have the inside u is equal to sine of x, and then our outside g of u, that is equal to u squared. So u prime is equal to cosine of x, and then g prime of u is equal to 2u. So we're going to go ahead and use that to find our first derivative. We have cosine of x times 2u, but I'm going to replace that back in with sine of x. So this is equal to 2 cosine x sine x, and this is actually a trig identity. And so this is going to be equal to sine of 2x. And Alrighty. So we want to go ahead and find local extrema, which means we want to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to take inverse sine of both sides. And the purpose of doing that is so inverse sine with sine cancel out, and I'm just left with the inside. So I have 2x is equal to inverse sine at 0. So remember, this is going to be the angle where sine is 0, and we need to pay attention to our interval. So if I draw out our interval, I know sine goes something like this. But we're going to be bounded between pi over 3 and negative pi over 3. So the only time we have a value of 0 is when theta is equal to 0. So that means that that's going to be 2x is equal to 0, which tells me our critical point, x is equal to 0. So the second derivative test is going to use the second derivative. So before we even go into what we're going to do with the value of 0, let's go ahead and find the second derivative. So f double prime x, I'm going to go ahead and use chain rule. So we have the derivative of the outside, which is cosine, at the inside, 2x, times the derivative of the inside, so 2. So if I wanted, I could rewrite that as 2 cosine of 2x. We want to look at the concavity at the critical value. And we are going to do that by plugging in our critical value to the second derivative. So here I get 2 cosine of 0. And cosine at 0 is equal to 1. So this is 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. So that means at x equals 0, f of x is concave up. If I were to draw a picture, it would look something like this. And this tells us if it's a relative minimum or a relative maximum. Because if we have a part that is concave up, we're going to have a relative minimum. So we can say, so x equals 0 is a local. It'd be the same thing if it was concave down. If it was concave down, we would have a local maximum. So let's go ahead and compare this to our actual function. I have that right here. And looking at the concavity, I can tell that this is for sure concave up if we agree with that. And we also know at x equals 0, that is a relative minimum, and it's actually our absolute minimum. But we only had to find the local extrema, so I wasn't worried about the absolute. So that's how we can use a second derivative test to find our local minimums and maximums. So I have that written out all officially here. We have suppose f double prime, so the second derivative, is continuous on an open interval containing c, with f prime of c, so the first derivative is equal to 0, aka x equals c is a critical value. So we have if the second derivative is greater than 0, aka it's concave up, then we have a relative minimum, or a local minimum at x equals c. Likewise, if f double prime of x is less than 0, so we have it's concave down, then we have a local maximum. If we have that f double prime at c is equal to 0, then the test is inconclusive. So f may have a local minimum, it might have a local maximum, it could have neither. And that's when we would have to use more of the first derivative test. So here we go. Let's use the second derivative test to locate the local extrema of f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared. So our first order of business is to find our first derivative. Let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. So here I can pull out a 3x, and I'm left with x minus 2. And we want to go ahead and set that equal to 0. 
So this is going to give us two critical values. We get x is equal to 0, and we get x is equal to 2. So now we can go ahead and find the second derivative, and when we do that, we get 6x minus 6. Now, what we can do here is just plug in our critical values, or we could do a number line. I'm going to show us what this looks like with a number line. So what I mean by that is I'm going to set it equal to 0 and find my inflection points. So if I add that 6 over, I get 6x equals 6. Dividing both sides by 6, I get x equals 1. So let me go ahead and draw that out. Okay, so now we want to test our intervals for their concavity. So I'm going to choose a test point in each. I'm going to choose 0 and 2. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my second derivative to see if it's concave up or down. Okay, so first when I plugged in 0, I got negative 6. And when I plugged in 2, I got positive 6. And so that tells me when we're less than 1, we're going to be concave down. And when we're greater than 1, we're going to be concave up. So now we want to look at how this applies to our critical points. And actually, I plugged in our critical points because those are two great test values. And so when we have x is equal to 0, our function is concave down. And when x is equal to 2, our function is concave up. So that tells us I have a local maximum and a local minimum. I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So those are my answers written out real nice. It depends on how you write it out on what your teacher expects of you, so make sure to pay attention to that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and compare this to the actual graph. So I have that right here. And now let's go ahead and first look at the inflection points. And so our only inflection point was right here at x equals 1. And so we can see on the left side we do have something that's concave down, which gives us a relative maximum at x equals 0. And then on the other side, we have concave up, which gives us a relative minimum at x equals 2. So that's how it works out with the graph. Let's go ahead and do another example here. We have f of x equals x squared times e to the negative x. So in order to find the first derivative, I'm going to go ahead and use product rule. So I get x squared and e to the negative x is my second term. Let me go ahead and set that up. Alrighty, so the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. If we don't remember how to find the derivatives of e's, I like to remember it with a triangle. So first you always drop it down, and then you multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of negative x is just negative 1, and that's how I got it. Alrighty, so we can use this to find our actual first derivative. We just multiply across and add them together. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So it looks like I can pull out an x, and I can pull out an e to the negative x. And so I'm left with 2 minus x. And remember, we want to find our critical value, so we set this equal to 0 and we solve. So this is going to give us three values. We get x equals 0, we get x equals 2. In the middle, we have e to the negative x equals 0, but that's actually never going to be true. There's no x value we can plug in to make that true. So this is going to give us no critical value. So we, again, have two critical values at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's go ahead and solve for the second derivative. It looks like we need to use product rule on this first term. So our first thing is 2x, and our second is e to the negative x. We already calculated the derivative of the second one right here, and we can just plug that in after. But let's go ahead and do this. Alrighty, the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. And again, we can use these, cross, multiply, and add them together in order to find the first part of our second derivative. Okay, so last time for our first derivative, we had already taken the derivative of x squared e to the negative x, and that was equal to 2x e to the negative x minus x squared e to the negative x. Don't forget we have to distribute this minus sign of cross because we're subtracting the whole thing. Alrighty, let's go ahead and combine some like terms. It looks like we can combine these two together and we get negative 4x e to the negative x. Let's go ahead and try to simplify this a little bit. So it looks like I can pull out an e to the negative x. Looks like I got a polynomial in there. So let's go ahead and rewrite it in a way that's more familiar to us where we have that descending order. Alrighty, 
So this is a case where you might not want to set up a number line because x squared minus 4x plus 2 does not simplify very nicely. We'd have to use a quadratic formula in order to find our zeros. And so this is a case where I would suggest plugging in our critical values straight into the deriv second derivative in order to see the concavity. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I don't need to simplify this all the way. All I care about is that this will be a negative value. So let's go ahead and look at both our values first. When I plugged in x equals 0, I got a positive value, which means it will be concave up. And that means at our critical value, we have a local minimum. And then similarly, for our other critical value at x equals 2, I got a negative value, which tells me that I will be concave down and I have a local maximum. I think it always helps to draw out pictures if you can because then you can visually see it. Um, it really helps me, so I love sharing that with other people. But now we can go ahead and write this out all officially, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, let's compare this to the real thing. I have the graph up here, so I'll go ahead and erase. And let's go ahead and look at our concavity. So we have two different types of concavity, right? We first have that it is concave up, which results in a local minimum at x equals 0. And that's what we have written out right here. And then we switch at some point to being concave down, which results in a local maximum at x equals 2. So our function checks out with our actual answer. So that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other videos or topics or problems you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.